Can you explain this, please? This alleged police impersonator has cops questioning themselves. He has more gear, but he does. Unfortunately for this supposed imposter, one misstep in his masterful plans would trigger the beginning of his downfall. I'm not sure if this is law enforcement or what. He's going to kill everybody on the road. Dude, if I was an average citizen, I would think that that was the cop. Right. You're under arrest right now. Why am I under arrest? Around midnight on January 21st, 2024, an unmarked black cruiser with flashing lights allegedly pulled over a civilian vehicle. The driver of the unmarked marked cruiser then flagged down a Columbus police officer for assistance. Soon after, a third cruiser arrives as backup. Due to the appearance of the scene, officers expected the stop to be a felony apprehension. Unknown to officers at the time, the whole traffic stop is a fraud. The officers take a moment to look over the legitimacy of the patrol car in question. I don't know if that's real or not. I mean, okay. yeah. This is not going to be a felony stop. I'm going to go to three with some more information. Federal application. Questioning the legitimacy of the plates, the officer forwards the information to dispatch to get an answer. It's going to be out of Ohio. It's Ocean Frank Adam Paul 39. It might come back as the Ohio Fugitives Task Force. I'm not sure if this is law enforcement or what. Uh, that is the case. A 120 Marconi Boulevard is the registered address that is listed as Ohio Fugitive Apprehension Program. In an absolutely unbelievable twist of events, it turns out the vehicle was actually registered to the Columbus Division of Police Headquarters. The information causes the officer to say, It's real. I have to put 120 mark on it. All right, so. so he's trying to check ID. It's coming back to your guys' HQ. Yeah, okay. So, I, I don't know. We'll figure out what we got going here. All right. Well, that's the Fugitive Task Force guy, ain't it? Okay. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. Yeah, that guy's always all over the place. <laughs> What's the uh, task force in Fugitive for anybody like Good question. <laughs> I called on them. Yeah, that's... No, no I, I waved them down. He was going to kill everybody on the road. What's going on with him? Dude, he was going 11 on the road. Went in front of three other people. I'm off duty right now. Right. I'm going home. Uh, I got all my gear in the back. I can show my credentials and everything. Yeah, all right. He, we checked everything. Yeah, what's up? Uh, he was going to, I mean, real problem. So I, I just stopped him, and I flagged the, uh, I, I saw the Mark Columbus police officer. I flagged him down. I said, you need to fucking go, go talk to them right now. That's it. Do you have a badge number? Yeah. These images, exclusively obtained by our channel's investigative reporting team, reveal what the mysterious agent presented to the officer. We have redacted any personally identifiable information. Notice the seal of the United States embellished on both the badge and ID, hinting at federal authority. The design also heavily resembles an FBI badge. Compare for yourself. Oh, wow. Oh, you federal. Okay. Note that, at least from the perspective of our visuals, there only appears to be one officer speaking to the mysterious driver after he is asked if he is a federal officer. This will be important later. Uh, what is it? Your badge number? Uh, what? Uh, you have uh, that? 7937. 7937. Okay, that's good. Just that way I can put it in the call. It's a no ops. So I don't know how you guys want to deal with it. Oh. Deal with it. It's the first one out here. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I was punning to him, so I was like, I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Try to make a traffic stop on somebody? In a marked car? What the fuck? Who the fuck is he with him? He's a fugitive task force guy, but he's the one that calls in all his stuff. That's all. Like, we thought it was you guys. Yeah. That's the main way, reason we stopped. We're like, some civilian on here making traffic stops? Yeah. He was just, I, I, I flagged down the first marked car that I saw. Yeah. I mean, it was a real problem on the road. So he's going 11 miles an hour? He was going 11 down here. He tried to drive into two other cars. The one person got a little bit road ragey on him. Yeah. And was following him, like, real close. The one guy that was going to, like, I think they're going to fight. So I just hit the lights on him real quick. He stopped right here in the middle of the intersection. I gave him commands 11 times on my on, on my radio with the lights on. Turn right, turn right, turn right. Get off the road, get off the road. He didn't follow any instructions. 
I wasn't getting, I, I, I got no gear on yeah. right now. Oh, Everything's yeah. in the back, right? I saw the Columbus officer right here. I said, hey, whip around, and then that's where we're at. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. Are we good? Yeah, I appreciate it. It's a uh, no ops uh, and language line. Do you want my card? Sure, why not? Just kiss whatever. Yeah, thank you. The mysterious driver claims to be part of the Ohio Fugitive Apprehension Program, but officers may be confusing him with the legitimate U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force, seeing as they've said task force numerous times at this point. Unlike local law enforcement, these task forces specialize in specific cases and operate within particular legal bounds. Charles Sanso, a Marshal Service supervisor for the task force in their area known as the Southern Ohio Fugitive Apprehension Strike Team or Task Force, so fast for short, clarifies their procedures. Before a task force can pursue a wanted criminal, a fugitive identification number must be issued and a warrant must be validated. Non-federal task force members have the singular duty of pursuing fugitives and don't have any of the other responsibilities of full-time deputy U.S. Marshals. Typically, fugitive agents avoid interacting with stops like this one due to the questionable legality of the situation, as they can only pursue wanted criminals under those circumstances. A supposed federal officer stopping a non-fugitive for going 11 miles per hour is likely leading to confusion among officers. Appreciate you. Yep, thank you. Have a good night. That's weird. Right? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's always calling in. Oh, stuff. That dirty, sir. Yeah. You guys have seen him before? Yeah. He's always over here doing I've never stuff? seen him before. Like, he's always calling and stuff about 48s and stuff. He's okay. like, people from like, about people out of state and everything. Like, dude, what do you want us to do with it? But yeah. he's like legit, though. Yeah, he is. Okay. Because that's what we were trying to figure out. We were like, is this guy real? I thought it was either you guys or then I was like, oh, is it security? Then I was like, but uh, yeah, he's no ops and I don't know how we're going to handle it. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll see what's going on. Right okay. Cool. Uh, language line, by the way, too, Spanish. Oh. So. I love that. Yeah. At this point, the officers let the mysterious cruiser leave so they can focus on the driver he allegedly pulled over. As you may have heard already, the pulled over individual requires a translator, and he is allegedly no ops or has no operator's license. The officers communicate with him by utilizing a human translator over their radio. They find that the driver is a 20-year-old Hispanic male traveling with other non-speaking individuals. This could possibly be the reason why he didn't immediately pull over when he was instructed to do so by the mysterious mysterious cruiser. Allegedly, the passengers in the vehicle also do not have driver's licenses on them. After communicating with the driver, the officers reconvene about the situation. What are you going to do with it, Russ? Yeah. The officers are likely hesitant to pursue the situation due to the questionable legitimacy of the initial traffic stop. Under the Fourth Amendment, individuals cannot be unreasonably seized without probable cause. If probable cause is lacking, any related searches or seizures violate this right. The potential that an individual may not have been stopped unless someone impersonated an officer is a serious violation of the Constitution and opens up the potential for a lawsuit. The officers are wisely hesitant to take any action against the driver. Why is he making traffic stops on my car? Dude, I thought we were coming out to something good, though. That's like what I thought. saying, like, good job. When we walked up here, like, no one's near the car, and I was like, so... Yeah. <laughs> that dude make a fucking traffic stop. He did. Get out of my car. Yeah, I'm, that's why I'm not pushing he, this around. Yeah. So you guys never dealt with him on seconds? He is no. kind of popular. I've seen the car, but... They were all lined up here like a felony stop. I'm like, what in the world? And I was like, this has got to be Franklin County. And then I didn't see any marks. Yeah. So I was like... Because he has the yellow letters up there like it's Franklin County. Yeah, like, on the front license plate. Yeah, and me and Columbus were talking and like, is this guy real? Like, is he a real... So does he just drive around and do whatever the fuck he wants or like... Yeah, I, I guess he reads like plates and he gets like locations of people. I want to check this guy for warrants, and, All right. and we're going to be done with this. According to his police report, the officer confirms that the individual does not have any warrants. The officer then uses a translation app to let the driver know he needs to call a licensed driver to leave the scene. Comprende? Yeah. Cool. 
the officer did not issue any citations as he was uncertain of the validity of the traffic stop, and so he drove off, leaving the white car behind. This officer couldn't shake the idea that a federal fugitive task force officer would be making low-level traffic stops. Leaving no stone unturned, the officer used the business card the mysterious driver handed him and decided to do a little homework on exactly what the Ohio Fugitive Apprehension Program actually is. What he found likely brought him great concern for the situation. In the report, he details he found the website for the Ohio Fugitive Apprehension Program to be ohiofap.com. We checked the website ourselves to find it is now a parked domain that is not active. However, at the time of this officer's research, he described the website as a single landing page that shows the seal of the Ohio Department of Insurance and a picture of the badge that was presented to the officer. Using Internet Archival Services and context from the police report, we've recreated what the website may have looked like to the officer at the time of his research. We've censored any contact information. At the bottom it stated that the organization was founded by veterans. It also stated that the organization is actively recruiting licensed agents and sworn officers. Reports by news outlets that came at a later date revealed even more details about the mysterious driver. At the time of publishing this video, he is still listed as an active member of the Ohio Bail Agents Association. This association allows certain entities to apprehend individuals to court only under the specific circumstance that they are out on bond. In other words, he's a bail bond agent, who according to WBNS-10 owns the nonprofit called the Ohio Federal Apprehension Program, and under no authority has any legal right to use flashing lights or a mock police cruiser to pull over random citizens. In fact, if we take a look at the badge the man used to allegedly represent himself with on his person and on his website, you'll find he may have opened himself up to even more legal trouble. This badge lists the word enforcement, which may not seem like a big deal at first. However, under Ohio law, bail bond agents are restricted from referring to themselves as bounty hunters or bail enforcement agents, the key word being enforcement. Under this law, if a bail bond agent is found guilty of doing this three times, it is considered a felony. On top of that, the officer discovered that anyone from the general public could purchase this badge from several online retailers. According to an interview conducted by NBC4 Columbus, officials confirmed that this situation was one of many conducted by this man. Westerville Police Department's Detective Lieutenant Justin Alloway had this to say about the man. I know one person that he did stop. He actually placed under arrest because they had a warrant for their arrest. However, it wasn't a felony warrant that he had a contract to be able to actually arrest that person. How they discovered this information may baffle you. For now, let's move back to where we left off. The next night, officers then get together to apprehend the suspect roughly 20 hours after the initial traffic stop was conducted. They park their cruisers down the street and make their way to their targeted house on foot. What's going on? Hey, you remember me from last night? Yeah, I do. What's going on? So we had a couple more developments about that traffic stop. Can you come out here and talk to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get a uh, socks and shoes on. Oh, actually, you're under arrest right now. Why am I under arrest? Turn around, put your hands right back. Yeah, yeah. For unlawful detainment and impersonating a police officer. I have done none of that. You have the right to remain silent for what? Anything you say can be used point. against you in court of law. Do you understand? I do. Just, I don't know what's happening right now. I don't what is happening? We'll explain it to you in just a minute, but we're going to do what we need to do and make sure everybody's safe, okay? Okay. The officers immediately read him his Miranda rights. Although he voices some resistance to the legitimacy of his arrest, he complies to each command the officers give. What, what is happening? Would you arrest her for impersonating a police officer? How did I impersonate a police officer? I never impersonated any police officer ever. We will explain all that later. As the man is taken to the real patrol car, another officer stays behind to explain the situation to who they assume is the man's wife. So, I'm Officer Ross of Westerville. Last night, there was a traffic stop made on South Cleveland Avenue. Your husband initiated that traffic stop with red and blue lights and stopped a car and detained an individual. He's not a licensed police officer in the state of Ohio, and that is unlawful detainment and impersonating a police officer. So, okay. And based on the evidence that we have right now, he's not and never has been a police officer he can't do that okay. all of these are misdemeanor charges he has a license for bail bond bail insurance. Bonds. yes right unfortunately he made a traffic stop on somebody 
Okay, but I know he only did that for the good of, he felt like that was necessary. I understand. However, okay. the, the significance of this goes a little bit beyond just the criminal law, and there is a constitutional violation of the Fourth Amendment that happened. Somebody's constitutional rights got violated, and their liberty was taken from them. Do you have any questions for me? I mean, this is <laughs> not at this time. I mean, okay. Kinda, a lot. Yeah, it kind of came out of nowhere. No, so we, we, um, we were just watching the is, Chiefs and Bills so. game, like. Yeah. Um, I'm to be as respectful as possible. No, and you have been. Um, it sure just really kind safe. of. Okay. Do you know if he has the original Ohio plate license plate for that? Because the plate that's on there is like a plate that someone made somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know. Uh, well, that's fine. That's fine. But just in case we need to come back in. You know, we yeah, no, I mean, you can. Them. I just, yeah, um, I don't know. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, we'll talk to him. As you just heard, the current plates that were on the vehicle were plates that were likely bought from a third-party website. He has a legal license plate under the same tag number, but he swapped out the plates for the more official-looking color. Soon enough, the officers head back out to the real cruiser where the man is apprehended. Thank you for the cooperation. Can you explain this, please? Go ahead and take a seat. We'll explain it. <laughs> It's like a police car. Yeah, it's a computer and everything. Dude, he's a guy in there too. Yeah, he's sleeping there. Dude, he has this. Dude, how's an average citizen? I would think this guy was to be gone. Right. We ran a number of license metrics with the back of the thing, like a burner phone or something. But it's just like uh, a third party, like, you know. Voice mailbox, basically. Mm. You can get one. Yeah, uh, those shirts in there, though, look pretty, um, too. It says, too, if you should tax for each fugitive agent. I don't know how you get those shirts, though. Your mailbox, and you can't have a... I don't know how he's got Marconi as his address. Yeah. I don't need it. That's... Yeah, you know, well, he'd go to any DMV. Are they... You present a badge in credit. They really have people right. really paying attention. Sure. So you said, what? He said you have more stuff than you do? Yeah. Like, like gear and stuff? Oh, like... Right. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> medical bag. He's got the same like duty bag I have, but he's got that little drink bottle thing on the side. I'm like, how did I get one of that? It's kind of nice. I don't want to say he's more dedicated, but I mean, he has more gear. But he does. <laughs> just no authority. If he wants it so bad, just go to the class. Huh? I mean, like a week. So. Yeah. Yeah, with all the stuff I need. Yeah, I guess so. What the officer mentions here might be alluding to the man's troubling past. According to court records, the man once faced charges for petty theft, operating without a license, tag violations, driving while on a suspended license, and reckless driving. The reckless driving charge came to be after it was amended from an operating while intoxicated charge. Of those charges, he was found guilty. He also faced charges in the past for improperly transporting a firearm, had a different impaired driving charge, and had one charge of disorderly conduct, but those were dismissed. We have an academy. Yeah. What's the woman not hiring, but someone else will. <laughs> <laughs> they read his Miranda rights again to be sure he understands them. Afterwards, they continue explaining the situation to the apprehended individual. Those plates are fictitious. They're not the original Ohio plates that came on it. Correct. That being said, that vehicle is parked illegally without real license plates. Okay, I've talked to the state. Uh -huh. All of that is in process. I, I, I think that there's a miscommunication here. My intention is never to impersonate law enforcement. I've never identified myself as such. I am licensed with the state. I am a fugitive recovery agent. I, every interaction I've had with anybody, I've had all you guys involved. It was right. a safety issue on the plate just because of the nature of the job. Right. right. It's the same reason that my driver's license comes back to Marconi. Right. And it's a safety issue. It's not to impersonate anybody. It's sure. to keep my family safe. Once this is said and done, that emergency equipment is going to have to come off of there. Okay. So. But uh, that, again, that's that's it's still on application with the AG's office. To get to the meat and potatoes of things, okay. an individual was, was detained and their Fourth Amendment rights were violated. And in the process of that, red and blue lights were activated on that roadway. With that address and everything coming back to 120, that's impersonating a police officer. It wasn't the intention. So, it, it, it was public safety, and it was to wave down a Columbus police officer. I used the lights to signal for them to come because they were going to do harm to other people on the car. Okay. Which I do have the videos 
along with that. You do on how they Unbelievably, it appears the man went as authentic as possible, even suiting himself up with body cam footage. After getting a warrant and going through the footage, officers were able to see this man made numerous stops, and this is where the Westerville detective lieutenant learned the man arrested someone without the proper credentials to do so. As for his license plate address being listed at Columbus Police Headquarters, Detective Lieutenant Justin Alloway also had some thoughts on this as well. He told ABC6 News, that's a privilege that's reserved for police officers to protect their home address. He had to file paperwork with the BMV showing that he is a peace officer, and that was obviously fraudulently done so that could rise to a felony charge in the future. Gave you my card. You did. I, everything I thought was above board. If there's an education here, if I crossed I don't think that this needs to be an arrestable situation. We can figure out a way that I can say, okay, did I misstep? I absolutely believe that you meant well. But based on our conversation last night, you told me that you activated your overhead lights, stopped the car, gave him 11 commands over the PA, pull to the right. You initiated- I, I asked him to get off the roadway right. while the Columbus officer was coming. And the Columbus officer said you had him stopped. The Columbus- He wouldn't move. He would just stop dead in the road. He, he was just sitting in the middle of a green light, and I saw the Columbus officer. I, I hit the lights, and I waved him over, and I said, hey, you know, mm -hmm. you got to get this guy right now. You got to get him. He goes, hey, who are you with? I said, I'm with the Ohio Fugitive Apprehension Program. That's exactly who. Right. We're a nonprofit, state of Ohio, right? He goes, okay, cool. Do you have our, your ID? I showed it to him. I showed it to you. Gave the card. If I didn't hit the lights, I, I, I was afraid somebody was going to get hurt. And I feel like I was very transparent. You were the same one that came out with the suicide call, right? I don't believe so. The man seems to imply he was involved with police during a different incident. I'm not recalling that. We need to look at the intent. Right. Right. When we were speaking, you know, I asked you for your badge number. You gave that mm -hmm. to me. I said, so you're federal. I don't believe I, well, I didn't respond. You didn't respond. No, I, I, so, I think I said, no, I'm state. And then the other guy was it, talking to me from the other side. I'm absolutely not federal. This is a call back to the moment we asked you to note earlier. The man claims he was distracted by another officer speaking to him from the other side. Let's rewatch that moment. Oh, wow. Oh, you're federal. Okay. Uh, what is it? Uh, oh, wow. Oh, you're federal. Okay. Uh, what is it? You didn't respond? You didn't correct me? No, no. That's why I said, hey, do you want my card? Our organization is a nationwide organization, I right? See. But we're licensed through the state of Ohio. Gotcha. Technically, are we federal? Yeah, we... The group is, but I would never say I'm a federal agent or a nationwide agent or anything like that. There is a serious issue. Their Fourth Amendment was put in jeopardy I, I, by I, somebody who didn't have the authority to do it. While you may have meant well, we have to pursue it. I understand. So you, you've pursued it. The arrest is a done deal. This was something that we just set up. My I real understand. job, this could destroy my livelihood. I didn't destroy their livelihood. I believe that they were highly intoxicated. I don't know how all the rest of it. I didn't even hang around. The officer takes a moment here to ask the man if he knows where the real license plates are for the vehicle. The officer offers a courtesy in that if he can replace the plates, they won't tow the vehicle. However, the man shares a more shocking anecdote about what is in his unofficial cruiser. The shotguns in there, okay. some other stuff, right? But if you want to put that in the in the uh, garage there, okay. that way it's not hanging out. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. All right. Are you warm enough? No. Um, all right. The officer suggests an even deeper courtesy, brainstorming other options if the man or his wife cannot find and replace the plates. Another option you just have to pull that thing into the driveway and park the other car behind it. I don't care if you can play on it. I don't know if you care. If she just wants to pull it in, I'd say let him do that and be done. I've never driven it, but I guess I'll figure yeah, it out. that way, because it doesn't have any plates on it. Do you know how to get the shotgun out of it? No, I no. don't okay. know anything. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll figure it out, I guess. Are you able to grab his wallet? Pardon me, I'm so sorry. Are you giving it to him? Yes, yep, yep. I'm not taking it for evidence or anything like that. He wanted it, so. Okay. I, I'm not, you know, I'm being straight up with you. No, I know, I know. I'm sorry. This is really, like. <laughs> oh, I, I totally understand. This is out, no. of, the way, out of nowhere, and it's a lot. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'll figure the car out. Just okay. let me get some shoes and a coat on. So, yeah, this is what was presented to me last night. Okay. When I was with the Federal Reserve, 
All, all federal badges like that. All federal officers and federal yeah. agents have badges that look like this. Oh, shit. $44 on the I mean, Oh, yeah, I would take the badge and ID. Yeah. Or you take pictures at minimal. Yeah. I mean, he really believes this, though. Unless he's found yeah, some kind of loophole in the law to be out here doing this, but still. Mm -hmm. Can't be stopping a car, so he's screwing himself there. Right. And I spoke with your wife. We're just going to have her pull the vehicle here into the um, driveway so it's safe and we don't have to worry about it. When do you do it? What's that? When do you do it? She, uh, she's, not, she's not going to rent this stuff. No. Just, just you, you know how to drive the car. Just put it up wherever you want to put it. Car policy dictates that we can't move it unless it's a public hazard, right? Or we can watch her that way she doesn't get anything anywhere or anything. The officers tell the man he will likely be able to go on bail tonight as he'll only be facing misdemeanors. They give him a moment to tell his wife this before she moves the unofficial patrol vehicle. Are we home tonight? I love you. I'll call you. I just need something with a just, 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 no, there, no, it's, it's not loaded. Just, just it's put it up there. No, it's not loaded. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll handle it. We got cameras all over the house. Why is it not turning off when I take the key out? I have not been in the car with it. Checking down an eight. Chris Leal is on 27. Got the snap and hands off. Yeah. Kirk over the right tackle. Oh. That's different. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> for me too. And you have all of my card if you have questions. I do. Okay. Thank you. According to court records, the man pled not guilty and was released the following day on his own recognizance, meaning he didn't have to pay a bail amount to avoid jail time. He faced four charges, one for impersonating an officer, one for unlawful restraint on a person's liberty, one for operating a vehicle bearing fictitious license plates, and one for prohibited use of flashing red and blue lights. Shortly after, police would get a warrant to search his vehicle and other properties. According to several news friend. sources and police documentation, the police alleged would find the interior of the squad vehicle had a computer that very closely resembled official use, a partition between the front and back seats of the vehicle, a shotgun mount, and of course a shotgun, what appears to be handcuffs, tactical gear donning the infamous badge along with several utilities, a taser, a handgun, and, as mentioned earlier, dash and body cam equipment the man allegedly used to record himself with during different traffic stops he conducted. As far as his verdict goes, it appears his court case was initially pushed back to a later date, but the case was then entirely dismissed by request of the prosecutor less than a month after his arrest. With that being said, for this case, this individual was not found guilty on any of the charges he faced, served no jail time, and got his court fees dismissed. The individual in this case is presumed innocent. We have posted the video to inform the public and allow you to form your own opinion. As of the time of publication, it is not clear if the prosecutor may file new charges at a later date, or if the matter may be taken up as a federal prosecution. It is unclear if the man still has access to the equipment or the vehicle involved in this case. We're good. Good work, everybody. Good work, everyone. You guys enjoying this? It's not even cold compared to last night. Oh, last night was terrible. Mm -hmm.